Speech synthesis, especially in the early computing days, was incredibly impressive to witness. As a kid, I desperately wanted Matthew Broderick's setup. You want to hear a talk? Yeah. Excellent. Yes, they do. How can I talk? It's not a real voice. Uh, this box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Computers in the 80s felt like magical boxes. A year before war games, Steve Jobs wowed audiences with the presentation of the first Mac. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Since then, the voice quality has improved quite a lot. My name is Allison. I'm a synthetic voice and I come by default with every installation of Mac OS. It's not perfect, but it's certainly passable. Μπορούμε να χρησιμοποιήσουμε ακόμα και άλλες γλώσσες πέρα από τα αγγλικά. And nowadays, with the incredibly fast development of AI, we can take things even further. We can get natural sounding speech that can even mimic our own voice. AI-generated speech might not yet be perfect, but it's really amazing how easily accessible this tech is. The training for my voice was done in mere seconds. I didn't really time things, but the clone was accessible just moments after I uploaded the sample files. Let me show you how easy it is. At first, I uploaded just a one and a half minute audio sample, but just to make sure that I'm getting the best quality possible, I uploaded five minutes of audio in total. Eleven Labs, the company behind the software, says that uploading more than five minutes won't improve the results, so I just stopped at that. Now let's hear how the AI voice fared. With Monterey, macOS's latest release, Apple democratizes photogrammetry. For those of you who might not know, photogrammetry is the process of creating a 3D model out of a series of photographs. You can either use your phone or a regular camera, snap a series of pictures, and then the software figures out the rest. Here's how the real voiceover sounds like. With Monterey macOS's latest release, Apple democratizes photogrammetry. For those of you who might not know, photogrammetry is the process of creating a 3D model out of a series of photographs. You can either use your phone or a regular camera, snap a series of pictures, and then the software figures out the rest. And let's go back once more to the AI voice. With Monterey macOS's latest release, Apple democratizes photogrammetry. As you can hear, the delivery of the AI voice lacks variance. The whole narration sounds very robotic and monotone. Apparently though, this is a known side effect when using the default settings. We have to adjust the stability of the voice to get a more natural sound. Lower values will give us more variance, but the lower we go, the more unpredictable the results will be. With Monterey, macOS's latest release, Apple democratizes photogrammetry. For those of you who might not know, photogrammetry is the process of creating a 3D model out of a series of photographs. You can either use your phone or a regular camera, snap a series of pictures, and then the software figures out the rest. This one sounds more natural. It's not 100% there, but it's good enough. Let's now switch to another example. On this one, you will clearly hear the issues when a low stability value is being used. Just a few days ago, Adobe announced its own version of AI. It's called Firefly, and the trailer for it looks amazing. It's yet one more image generation tool, but Adobe brings some new ideas to the table. Its system has a dedicated UI that makes inputting commands a whole lot easier. It definitely beats typing obscure commands on Discord. The trailer for it looks amazing. Amazing. It brings some new ideas to the table. Brings some new ideas to the table. <laughs> it's uh, funny to hear the AI voice emphasizing the word uh, table. It's a weird choice. Also, this pacing is a little bit too fast, but sometimes I do speak at a faster pace, so it's not completely wrong. It just feels a little bit off. And now let's hear the actual narration. Just a few days ago, Adobe announced its own version of AI. It's called Firefly, and the trailer for it looks amazing. It's yet one more image generation tool, but Adobe brings some new ideas to the table. Its system has a dedicated UI that makes inputting commands a whole lot easier. It definitely beats typing obscure commands on Discord. The AI voice sounds a little bit more aggressive in its delivery, and the pace again feels slightly sped up. After some uh, fussing about with the stability and match sliders, I managed to get something that sounds closer to the way I would speak. 
It's not exactly right, but it's in the general vicinity. Just a few days ago, Adobe announced its own version of AI. It's called Firefly, and the trailer for it looks amazing. It's yet one more image generation tool, but Adobe brings some new ideas to the table. Its system has a dedicated UI that makes inputting commands a whole lot easier. It definitely beats typing obscure commands on Discord. And we still have this weird coloring and random words, but generally, it's okay. I would say if you're not paying really close attention or if you don't know my voice at all, you could mistake the AI clone for a real voice. I sent this sample file to a couple of my friends just to see if I could fool them. I only asked them if my narration sounded any good. Mid Journey has been making waves the past few months. Some people love it, others hate it, but no matter what your opinion might be, one thing is true. The software will never stop improving. Even though the delivery is kind of off, especially in the way specific words are emphasized, most of them didn't suspect anything. Some felt that something was off, or that there was some over-processing of the audio file, but most of them bought that the voice was actually mine. Others though did suspect that something fishy is going on. Midjourney has been making waves the past few months. Some people love it, others hate it, but no matter what your opinion might be, one thing is true the software will not stop improving. So yeah, if you're not paying close attention and you're just scrolling through your social media feed, it's easy to get fooled, which is amazing and scary <laughs> all at the same time. The more the technology evolves, the more difficult it will be to distinguish what is real and what is not. If people that know you can be fooled that easily, you can imagine how much of an easier task it will be with voices we're not overly familiar with, like actors, politicians, etc. We're definitely not there yet. Currently, if you're paying attention, it's easy to tell what is what. The delivery is somewhat stilted, and when it's not, the words the AI chooses to emphasize are not the ones a real person would choose. Let's listen to another example and let's find all the telltale signs of an AI voice. Apple's M series has been very impressive so far. Apple has managed to build an SoC that is not only extremely performant, but also energy efficient. As we've seen on multiple tests, these chips are very good on pretty much any task, except one, 3D rendering. Granted, it's a niche category, so it's not big on Apple's radar, but if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're kind of left for dead. The transition from the first sentence to the second feels very abrupt. Apple's M series has been very impressive so far. Apple has managed to build an SoC that is not only extremely performant, but also energy efficient. Here's the real world voiceover. Apple's M series has been very impressive so far. Apple has managed to build an SoC that is not only extremely performant, but also energy efficient. As we've seen on multiple tests, these chips are very good on pretty much any task. Except one, 3D rendering. Granted, it's a niche category, so it's not big on Apple's radar, but if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're kinda left for dead. I'm still transitioning between the two sentences relatively fast, but there's a bigger pause there. And then there's this weird choice, except one, 3D rendering. Except one. <laughs> it's nice that the AI tries to vary the voice and emphasize this particular point, but it does so in a very weird way. It's a bit too aggressive. It feels like it's trying to deliver an impactful argument on a debate, when in reality it's a really simple and plain sentence. Granted, it's a niche category, so it's not big on Apple's radar, but if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're kinda left for dead. But if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're kind of left with it. It's like super monotone. It looks like the AI does understand what is being said, so it tries to emphasize words based on that. It might not always be successful, but it certainly makes the delivery more convincing than regular text-to-speech tools like macOS's text-to-speech feature. Apple's M series has been very impressive so far. Apple has managed to build an SoC that is not only extremely performant, but also energy efficient. As we've seen on multiple tests these chips are very good on pretty much any task, except one, 3D rendering. Granted it's a niche category so it's not big on Apple's radar, but if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're a kinda left for dead. And then there's the matter of compression quality. 
If you're playing this video on your phone, you might not get it, but if you're playing this through headphones or some good speakers, you will be able to hear the low bitrate quality. All the audio files I got back from Eleven Labs' website were just kilobytes of data, but I'm not sure if the small file size is because the file is heavily compressed or if it's just the AI not being able to deliver a high fidelity voice. Whatever the case may be, the audio quality is quite low. So for now at least there are ways to distinguish between a synthetic voice and a real one. Of course, if someone's eager to trick us, they will find a way. For example, stitching together all the good takes of the AI-generated files or masking the low bitrate audio by creating a low bitrate file overall. For someone who's not aware of the tech, all this might feel scary. When I revealed to my friends that the audio files they heard were AI-generated, they were completely shocked. Of course, I do see the dangerous aspects of the technology, but I don't think it's this big dangerous thing that will destroy the fabric of humanity. Will we see people abusing the tech for nefarious reasons? Absolutely, that's a given. I was also tempted to try it out with famous celebrities and politicians, but I decided to just stick to my own voice. Like with everything else, we just need to exercise a little bit of caution. If, for example, you hear that X celebrity made a wild statement, don't take it at face value. Check the source, listen to the audio file, and see if something feels off. Similar to the image of the Pope wearing a jacket. At a first level, you kinda suspect that it's a doctored image. You would never see the Pope wearing something like that. And beyond that, just inspecting the image reveals a lot of small details and glitches. Things you wouldn't see in a real photo. Will it get more and more difficult to distinguish between real and manufactured? For sure, but I think it's still going to be easy to tell. Kinda like watching a 3D character trying to emote. It might look impressive from a technical point of view, but it's still not 100% convincing. I think the healthier approach with all the AI developments is to accept that this technology is here and see how we can tame it and use it to our advantage. Anyway, that's my opinion, and I would love to hear yours. Do you find it exciting, or do you think it's a really dangerous piece of technology? Let me know in the comments below. And I think that's about it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.